What's going on guys? Happy day. <laughs> Kiki is in her office. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that I do for my clients. Whether you are a lifestyle client or a competition client, you know, I want to set you up for the best success in all avenues, whether that be in the gym, with your training, with your nutrition, whether you're following a meal plan or macro-based approach, grocery store hauls, literally anything that I can do to help them. Like I wish I could like be like in person with everyone every single day and be able to, you know, plan their meals, cook, teach them how to cook and things like that. And that's not always possible. So I have a lifestyle client. He texted me this morning. We are on a macro-based approach. So, you know, whether you are a lifestyle or a competition client, you know, it kind of depends on what phase of your diet you are in, whether you are in a cut, whether you're trying to maintain, whether we are in a reverse diet, whether we are in a building phase, circumstances depending how I'm going to coach them. I don't coach everyone exactly the same because everyone is different. Everyone has different needs, different things going on in their lives. And it's just unrealistic to make everyone do the same exact thing. Duh. Uh, so I'm going to go over a client example that I'm, uh, that I'm doing today. Um, at my office. Most, most of my days when I'm working with my lifestyle clients, teaching them how to track macros, incorporate this into their lifestyle. You know, I, like I said, I want to set them up for the best um, success. So, you know, I don't expect my lifestyle clients to bring their Tupperware with them when they're going out to eat with their family. I don't, want them to bring their scale and things like that. I basically just want to teach them how to track things appropriately when they are out at restaurants. So a lot of my days, I look at restaurants <laughs> and help them, you know, pick meals. And this is why, you know, client communication for me is at the highest level of priority. If I don't know what you're doing uh, or if I don't know what you're struggling with, I don't know how to help. But if your communication with me is really good, then we're going to make really good progress. So I have a lifestyle client. He reached out to me this morning and we are tracking macros. And he said, good morning, Kiki. I'm going to lean on you today for some advice slash guidance. Tonight, we're going to Mexican with the kids for dinner, and I could use some suggestions. I will have the following available to work with. So he gave me his carbs, fats, and protein that he has basically banked up and left for the day. We've been working on consistency with getting his food in and pre-planning in advance. So this week he already pre-planned his, you know, breakfast, lunch, and snacks in and trying to get things under control in the other, you know, at for dinner and making sure he's not like stuffing himself at night or have nothing to work with. So he gave me his macros that he has left for the day. So Thankfully, I know where they normally go to Mexican food. And Mexican is super easy to, you know, add into your diet. There's many ways that you can order things to make it fit your macros. When I'm even in an improvement season, I'll get like plain grilled chicken with like fajita veggies, ask them to be cooked with no uh, butter or oil and, and things like that. So next thing I asked, I was like, oh, well, Mexican is super easy to um, to, to track and you know, we have a lot of room to play with. So what do you typically go for at Mexican? So he said, you know, I enjoy it all. Typically I would get the burrito, whatever, but nothing is off limits. Just hook me up with the best options. It doesn't really matter. What really is my struggle will be the chips and salsa. Um, duh. It's so, that's where Mexican can do you dirty is the chips and salsa because it is so hard when they set that in front of you and you just want to eat it and you just keep eating and not really like realizing that after a handful of chips, you've consumed, you know, the equivalent of four tortillas that have been fried. <laughs> and then you get your meal filled with the beans and rice and cheese and, and all the good stuff. So what I do with my clients, I'm going to show you my computer screens on how I look at the menus and track it into, you know, um, my fitness pal and show them how to do that. So let's go. All right. So first thing I did was pull up the menu of the restaurant there that they are going to. And a lot of the Mexican restaurants are going to be fairly similar. They're all going to have fajitas, burritos, tacos, chicken dishes, um, 
seafood dishes, steak dishes, and things like that. So I always gravitate, gravitate towards fajitas because it's easier to pull apart and, and track that way. Uh, so we're just going to use fajitas as the example. Now, when you're tracking this into, say, your MyFitnessPal, they're not going to have your local um, Mexican restaurant in the MyFitnessPal diet or database. So what you want to do is find a close, similar restaurant that does have their database into MyFitnessPal. And that's going to be your big chain restaurants. So what I did was I Googled Mexican restaurants, chain Mexican chain restaurants. So on the border is one of the ones that does have their nutrition database into my fitness pal. So I pull up the local place, I pull up the on the border, and then I kind of just go through and see what some of the best options are. Like I said, fajitas are going to be the best options. So <clears throat> come up here to the fajitas. Now, obviously these fajitas calories that are listed are going to include all of the sides like the tortillas, the rice, the beans, everything like that. So you don't need to like pay attention to some of these all the time if, unless you want 1600 calories in a full meal. But chicken fajitas, border smart chicken fajitas, grilled chicken with sauteed vegetables served with, you know, black beans, the corn tortillas, pico de gallo, and guacamole. So that's going to be like your best option if you go to on the border. So what I did was I looked at the fajitas here and we're just going to do either shrimp or chicken fajitas. And then when you, this one is served with the veggies, served alongside the Mexican salad, rice, beans, and tortillas. But since I know he wants the chips and salsa, and I'm not going to say, no, you can't have the chips and salsa because then you're just going to hate your life. So what we did was in my fitness pal, I looked up on the border, tortilla chips. Look, 14 tortilla chips. We got some salsa in there the chicken fajitas with no sides. So that's just going to be the grilled chicken um, with the veggies. No no beans, no tortillas, no guacamole. And then, you know, the, the side salad, Mexican side salad or whatever. So I told him, I was like, you can't go to Mexican and not eat the chips. Here's what I would do with your macros. Either the chicken or shrimp fajitas, we're gonna go for the lower fat protein so you can save your fats for the chips. And then we're also going to do no rice, beans, or tortillas so you can save your carbs uh, or the chips and salsa. So he's still able to have a full meal of chicken fajitas with the veggies, with a side salad, and also have chips and salsa that fit the macros that he had allocated for the day. So you can see like the breakdown here on the MyFitnessPal with the carbs, fats, and proteins for each. I mean, 14 chips, that's still 38 carbs, 14 fat. So that's where a bulk of the calories are going to come from. But again, he's going to be able to eat the chips and salsa and then still have all of the goodness from the chicken fajitas. So high amounts of protein, still moderate, you know, higher levels of fats just because it's going to be cooked in oil. And he's at the level right now where, you know, probably not comfort level to be like, yo, I'm not going, can you cook this without oils and butter? So fats are coming from that, a little bit of carbs from, you know, the um, the seasonings and veggies and things like that. And then just like the simple side salad, because I mean, if you overeat on lettuce from the Mexican side salad, I think we would be okay. So that's kind of how I do it. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I love looking at menus and teaching people how to track things out at restaurants into my fitness pal. I've been tracking macros since gosh, 2014. So 10 years under my belt, I know how to track. So let me know if you have any questions. You can find me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, um, at Kikers Laugh IFBB Pro. If you're interested in my lifestyle or competition coaching, you can go to my website, coachkikilfg.com. Let's eat some Mexican. Let's go.